Good morning. We have a lot of announcements this morning. Uh, I think it's kind of obvious we have a few quilts in the church we're going to bless. I want to thank everyone who's helped make those, and I believe this Thursday we need volunteers to help pack them up to be sent off. We're doing a Bible presentation for the students. Uh, we have backpacks, we have health kits, and very importantly, we have a baptism. And so not only is it colorful, but also it's a very, very busy morning this morning. I wanted to give you an update. I have my third week of radiation for my cancer in my leg this week, and then I'm scheduled for surgery on October 27th. Uh, I've talked with uh, Kathy and Randy from the Senate office. My last day with you for a while will be Sunday, October 22nd, because I have eight meetings at uh, Mayo that week. And I'll be five days in the hospital and six weeks off work. So uh, the council is arranging for coverage. They will take care of that. I hope to be back with you on December the 10th if everything goes well. Uh, please notice the raffle tickets are on sale. Central Fest is coming up. And so we have a lot of things going on. Are there any other announcements we need to make? Even though we have a lot of children, there is no children's sermon this morning because we're doing the quilts and we're also giving the Bibles away. I would rather have a children's sermon because all these children take advantage of it, but we're doing all these other good things instead. And if I'm correct, Diane, I believe I counted 32 kids in Sunday school last Sunday. Is that right? Yep. Because I'm not having to rush off to Modena now. And so I try to sit down there a while. And so as they, were, as they were coming and going, Diane, I kept counting. So I got 40 in catechism and 32 in Sunday school. I think that's rather, that's 72 kids. Uh, we're doing quite well, aren't we, Diane? Keeping us busy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay, we will begin with the sacrament of baptism. So if the parents and the sponsors and the baby to be baptized will come up to the font. And yes, I'm walking much slower. My leg hurts more. But we'll get it done. You, sir, when the service is over, please go up there and get the bag, the little box for the candle, and the rose. That'll be at the end of the service. That way the family doesn't forget them, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Who all are our sponsors? My brother Scott, Josh, and my brother Scott. Okay. And as I said to them when they came in at the end of the service, y'all can come back up here and take a million pictures if you want, okay? Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Did everybody get a bulletin that's up here? Yeah. Okay. Sponsors for each candidate. There's something for you to say there. Come on, you big guys. It's right there on the front. Sponsors for each candidate in turn present the candidates by saying, we present. Thank you. As you bring Skylar to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture her in faith and prayer, so that Skylar may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Schuyler grow in the Christian faith and life? And the response is? We do. That's much better. <laughs> Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Schuyler in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? We do. 
Okay. Now, the church. People of God, do you promise to support Skylar and pray for her and her new life in Christ? If you are able, please stand. For the parents, the sponsors, and the congregation, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, Really? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live with you. Pour out the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, I'm going to need Schuyler. Head somewhere over the font. You're not going to like this. Scholar, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good, very good. Dad, why don't you dry the head? Yes, I agree completely. <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Just go ahead and sit there. Scholar, would you put up with me for a minute? Sustain, Scholar, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the, the with spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Okay, Scholar, if you love that, you're going to love this. Child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Dad, I'm going to hand this one to you because I don't want this anywhere near young Miss Scholar. Let your light so shine before others they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Would you turn and face the congregation, please? Let us welcome the newly baptized. Scholar says the baptism was fun, but let's have milk. <laughs> Can we have a round of applause for our newest member? Yes, they're applauding you, young lady. Okay. Y'all want to go ahead and sit down? Hmm? Yeah, you can go blow that out. And sir, this, sir, this and this are also theirs at the end of the service. Thank you. Oh, 
chosen by God, then were washed ever gently in mercy and love. Sin and power no more, Jesus opened the door to a fountain bringing healing and wholeness and The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Oh, 
Isn't that beautiful? Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And we're about to get more beautiful music. Let's watch those chords, please. No hospital visits this morning. <laughs> Thank you, David.
We'll now have the presentation of the third grade Bibles. We get to share a bench. Good morning. Uh, the ladies of the CLCW are so happy to present our Spark Bibles to our third graders this morning. So I'll call their names and Lois will present them. Uh, Leighton Arthur. <coughs> Grant Versa. This is Leighton. Lyle Carlson, Madeline Davidson, Good morning. Lila Miller, Kellen Olson. Noah Parker, Cade Regan, <laughs> Hannah Schmitz. Nevaeh Tuttle and Kinsley Wolf. And parents, we want you to feel free to share these with your children. Um, these are Bibles that they can use for a long, long time. God bless you all. Before we thank the ladies for this gift. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Praise the Lord. The first reading this morning is from Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish in the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor, and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. 
And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm responsively. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall tell of the might of your wondrous acts and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Our second reading is from Philippians. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able to sing the gospel acclamation on the screen. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they'd receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, the last work for only one hour and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. 
Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable on your side, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Please be seated. It sounds like we're in a labor union dispute this morning. Notice, though, how we begin the gospel lesson. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is different than on earth. The landowner calls those to work in the vineyard. They agree to the usual daily wage. But the ones who work only an hour, he pays as much as the ones at the first. And they say, well, this isn't fair. And he says, did I not agree Did you not agree to what I gave you? We need to go back to Jonah to understand for a minute because God is full of generosity. God is extravagant with his generosity. Nineveh. Nineveh was a sinful city and God was going to punish it for his sinfulness. But he wanted Jonah to go there and walk through the city and tell him it would be destroyed unless they repent and turn to God. And I hope you remember the story. Jonah got on a boat and went the other way. There was a horrible storm that came up. They thought Jonah was the cause of it. They throw him off the boat. A whale swallows him, and I think it actually says a big fish, and spits him up on the beach in front of Nineveh. Well, Jonah gets very angry because he doesn't want the people of Nineveh to be forgiven. He wants them to be punished because that's what they deserve. And then he walks through the city, apparently with his head down, muttering, Destruction will come upon the city unless you repent. And then as Jonah knew it would happen, they repented and God forgave them. And we hear the story this morning. Jonah is not full of extravagant mercy and generosity. God, however, he is. Not only with the people of Nineveh, but with us. We're able to baptize a baby because the baby hasn't done anything to earn God's love. It's simply a gift. It's simply grace. None of us have done anything to earn God's love. We don't stand before our maker and list all of our good deeds and our bad deeds and like a merit badge in the Boy Scouts. Well, if you get one more, you're good. Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do from the cross as he was dying. Jesus Christ died for each one of us and for our sins. And we are beloved of God. God loves each of us, especially our baby this morning that we baptize, because that is what grace means. Grace is always a gift. God is extravagant with God's grace. When I was serving in Ohio, I met another pastor. She had been a teenager growing up in rural Kentucky. I do not remember what denomination, but the denomination talked about hell and fire and brimstone a lot. And basically, as she put it, they tried to scare you out of hell and into heaven. Well, she went to a Lutheran Bible camp. And she said they kept work talking about this funny word, grace. And it meant it's given to you. It's a gift. It's given to you in the same way that your parents love you. It's given to you because God loves you. Well, she joined the Lutheran church and she became a pastor because she fell in love with God's grace. God fell in love with each and every one of us, especially Schuyler this day. God says to each and every one of us, I have more than sufficient grace for you. There is nothing you can do that will set you apart from me. When you turn from me, I invite you back. I love you. And out of that love comes that relationship we have with God and with Jesus Christ. Today we baptized in mercy and grace. Every day, you are a beloved child of God, and His abundant mercy, His abundant grace washes over you just like the water over Scholar, and you are forever loved by God our Father. Amen.
who help make the quilts please stand up if you're here and you help make the quilts will you please stand up can we have a round of applause I know there's probably more not here but thank you very much we appreciate that thank you God you've called us to go and do likewise as we reach out to our neighbors around the world send forth your spirit today as we call upon you to bless our work and make it holy Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. God, we give you thanks for those who've generously shared their resources in order to make these quilts and kits possible. Move us by their example to live generous lives. Jesus, teach, teach us, us to love our neighbors. Thank you, God, for the hands that have made and assembled these quilts and kits. May each compassionate touch be known to those who receive them as an expression of your love. Jesus, teach us to love our neighbors. God, we lift before you the staff and partners of Lutheran War Relief who will distribute these quilts and kits around the world. Give them strength and encouragement to do this important work and guide them as they reach out, reach our neighbors who are the farthest away. Jesus, teach us teach to love, love our, our neighbors. neighbors. Finally, God, we pray for our neighbors around the world who receive these quilts, kits, Neighbors we have never met, neighbors who are far away, neighbors who, like us, long for your grace and mercy. May these quilts and kits wrap our neighbors in love and fill them with the hope and peace that is only found in you. Amen. Before we continue, when I served in Michigan, our companion synod was the Holy Land, and I got to go for two weeks, and there's a Lutheran hospital in the Mount of Olives, and I got to visit. And what do you think I saw in the patients' rooms? Quilts from Lutheran World Relief. I want to thank all of you who helped make those very much for you touched so many people. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God, who is gracious and merciful, teach your church to invite and welcome all. Lead us to be grateful for the blessing of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God who sends the wind and the sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even the humblest parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how to best care for the earth and its creatures. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators Judges, members of the military and law enforcement, give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. 
God who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. God who is slow to anger, may we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence of Paul in prison. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called to in the world and in service to our congregation. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Here other intercessions may be offered, whether aloud or in the silence of your hearts. I would ask that Schuyler would be blessed this day on her baptism, that God would be with her this day and all the days of her life. Merciful God. God, who abounds in steadfast love, we give thanks for the saints called to the kingdom of heaven. United with them in spirit, hold us firm as we labor in this life and look for the lot to the life to come. Merciful God. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion, made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another as we prepare for the offering. Please stand. Salvation belongs to our God and to Christ the Lamb forever and ever. Great and wonderful are your Thank deeds, you, O God of the universe. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of all the nations. and thanks to you, holy God, for by your words you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. 
By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh. You speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death. The way of yourself.